and, and thanks to the larger group for in, uh, including me in this uh, conference. So uh, today I'm here to talk about data-driven connected TV. There's three main points I want to cover today. So the first is simply why use connected TV as a media channel. The next is how to use data-driven CTV to more effectively reach audiences. And then the last is just how do we buy this medium? What's the best way to buy it? So as a quick overview of what LG Ads does, um, we offer exclusive data uh, from the LG TVs as well as a bunch of other manufacturers. We also have exclusive media inventory um, on the connected TV space. And beyond just targeting viewers um, on CTV, we also are able to measure the effect of this medium along with linear TV on actual business outcomes. So things like sales, uh, visitation to a retailer, website actions, uh, that sort of stuff. So first to cover why you use CTV. So I think there's a couple key points here. Um, the first being is streaming consumption. So I don't think this is a surprise to anyone, but people are heavily watching streaming TV. And even you know, the older generations here are still watching it at a high rate. But when we start getting down to the millennials and Gen Z audiences, essentially everyone is watching streaming TV. So simply to reach your entire target audience, you need to use a mix of connected TV as well as traditional linear television. When we drill down to actual media consumption, um, the trend here is that as we get to younger audiences, that connected TV viewing time actually exceeds that of linear TV viewing. So again, to reach these audiences, whether it's an older audience or even a younger audience, we need connected TV as a medium. Now to get into data-driven connected TV. So there's a couple of ways to buy connected TV. I think the traditional method was go to connected TV publishers, buy this format and hope it generates reach and frequency in the places you need it. However, data-driven CTV allows you to guarantee these things to happen. One of the major drawbacks of linear TV is the inability to frequency cap, right? When we talk about digital channels, that's a standard part of almost every buy. With linear, the amount of TV someone watches and what they watch on TV as far as networks and shows is determining what they're seeing from an ad perspective. And this chart on the right is demonstrating this. When we look at the share of households by frequency level, you see a relatively even distribution. But we, when we look at that impression share factoring in frequency, those heavy TV viewers are getting overserved ads, which generates media waste higher than that frequency you'd like. And I think even more importantly, those lower frequency viewers, those lighter TV viewers, are not getting to the frequency levels needed to create business outcomes. So what companies like us can do is actually target viewers of television ads, of linear television ads, but only add frequency in the places we need it against those lighter TV viewers, while not adding frequency in the places that are already excessive. The other, um, I think, promise of connected TV is to generate additional reach. However, when you're just buying Publisher Direct, you really don't know what amount that's gonna happen until after the campaign. So in our case, we can actually suppress viewers of your linear TV ads, which adds pure incremental reach above that of linear TV. And this kind of demonstrated here, when we look at linear TV, there's this classic diminishing return for, from a reach perspective. That first dollar spent on linear is very effective at generating reach. However, you get to a certain point where pretty much every dollar is only generating additional frequency versus reach. So by suppressing viewers of your TV ad and serving connected TV, we're able to add that reach in a very efficient way, not dealing with that diminishing return. And beyond targeting viewers of your brand's TV ads with connected TV, we also can do a bunch of different kind of tactical executions. So for instance, we're able to target viewers of your competitors' TV ads. So in a place that's you know, very cluttered, the you know, kind of auto, CPG, all these major categories, using your competitors' TV spend, you can actually benefit your own brand. 
Beyond that, we can also target viewers of TV content, gaming, movie viewership. So all these, um, these viewership, much like on digital, speaks to the behavior of a customer. So we're able to align around those passion points of a consumer via TV viewership. The last point I think this is very important is how do we buy this medium with data-driven connected TV? So there's been a lot of trends in the industry as far as consolidation of who offers TV data and inventory. Um, in the past, there were a you know, large number of ad tech companies who licensed TV data and inventory via the actual TV manufacturers. Over time, the manufacturers saw value in this. They realized how valuable their data and inventory was. Because of that, they brought this in-house. So I think some great examples are Vizio as a company has was licensing TV and data in the past, and now they've brought that in-house. Uh, ourselves, LG, in the past were licensing TV data out to a couple ad tech companies and have now brought it entirely in-house as an exclusive offering. And the list goes on. Samsung, Amazon Fire, Roku, all these platforms are managing their owned and operated connected TV inventory and data. So that brings us to how to buy this. I think the good news for marketers is there's now a relatively small set of companies offering their data and inventory. What that gives you the ability to do is buy data targeted CPV and not deal with the frequency issues, uh, duplication issues with data sets that may have been there in the past when working through intermediary companies. The same goes for measurement, actually measuring that effectiveness across the entire universe and making sure you're reaching consumers. So as a whole, I think the kind of summary here is connected TV is a necessary medium because of the trend of viewership and consumption of television across the, uh, the age ranges. So it's needed to reach these audiences. The second thing is data-driven CPV allows you to not guess these outcomes, but rather utilize targeting to make sure they're happening. And then finally, buying direct from owned and operated data sets from actual TV manufacturers allows you to do this at a very effective level. And Alan, happy to answer uh, any questions that have come up. Hey, Michael. Um, yeah, I, I, I have not seen any questions, but I, thank you so much for this. This is great. I feel like you've just done sort of a, a preview reel for the, for the bigger report that we, we're doing with you guys, Vizio and Samsung over the next year. This is such an important yet underplayed piece of the smart TV ecosystem in general. Um, you know, because what all of the, the big three smart TV OEMs now have is you all have your own content, right? You have, you have a huge, you have, you know, fast, a free ad supported streaming TV service. So you've got hundreds of linear channels. So you have places to run the ads. Um, you know, you have your own data and measurement and you have your own, you know, your own ad sales. And mostly, which I think is the most important thing for the, the brand audience here is in something you had mentioned is the ability to sort of, you know, cap frequency. So what happens with a content driven, you know, part, somebody, you know, content driven partner is that they, lots of different people are selling their ads. It may be the trade desk, you know, it may be, you know, spot X, it may be through Roku, it may be, and then you also have people, you know, the linear, the linear TV companies, CBS, NBC are, are selling stuff and they have no way to know where it's all coming in from and all that. With LG, you guys see everything that's coming on the glass. So you're able to say, okay, you know what? This person already saw 10 of your ads, you know, and you told us you wanted to cap it. Let's, let's see what we can do here now. And that's, that's a solution to a huge problem that's, that's going, you know, that, that so many advertisers seem to face. Am I, did, did I say that correctly? Yeah, I, no, absolutely. You know, and I, I, you know, I don't want to be too self-serving, right? Yeah. With ourselves, we're a major player, but I think the good point yeah. is as a previous media buyer, it gets harder the more partners you're working with, right? And that yeah. the consolidation in the industry um, makes it a lot simpler, much in the same way you buy, say, television, right? 
right. as, the, as a brand, you don't just go and buy your entire schedule with ABC, right? You work with NBC, CBS, yeah. Fox. And I think the right. same goes now in the connected TV space. Exactly, exactly. And people aren't moving around. Like if I have, if your main TV in the living room is an LG TV, that's what you're watching that night. It's not like you're suddenly going, oh, I'm going to go watch, you know, a different TV in a different room. You're, yeah. you're in one place. So it, it makes the whole thing a lot easier. Um, well said. I appreciate it. <laughs> thanks, man. No, and thank you. Thank you. So check out TV Rev for our, or this, this smart TV report that we've got coming up. And now we're going to move on to our next.